If you work in just about any industry, you're probably using Slack for chat, Notion for docs, or another tool for files. And all of that has one thing in common. They all live in the cloud. Calinode takes that entire stack and runs it on your own server, giving you chat, documentation, and file management, all on a single platform that stays local, works offline, and scales from one person to an entire team. This video was voted on by our Discord members. Every week, we vote on what we cover next. If you want to say in future videos and access to discussion behind them, you can join our Discord using the link in the description below. This is Calinode. I'm your host, John. Let's get started. On your TuneEyes dashboard, first we need to create a dataset for Calinode. Click Data Sets on the top left. Select the dataset where you want to store Calinode. In my case, that's going to be on App Data. On the top right, click Add Dataset. Now name the dataset Calinode and click Save. Once your dataset is created, we need to adjust its permissions. On the lower left, you'll see a permission section. Once you have found that, click edit. We're going to leave user as root. Let's change the group to apps. Enable all group permission checkboxes and disable all permission checkboxes for other. Let's click apply group and now click save. Next, we're going to install Calinode. Click Apps on the left. We're going to be deploying Calinode on Dockage. If you're not familiar with what Dockage is, there is a link to our video in the description below. Let's open the web UI of Dockage. Click Create Compose at the top left. We're going to name our stack Calinode. Now let's head over to our wiki, which is linked in the video description below. We're going to search for Calinode. Once you have found Calinode, we're going to open that up. Next, we're going to copy the Compose YAML. Once you have copied that, we're going to head back to Dockage. Inside Dockage, you're going to highlight all the code, and then you're going to paste the Compose that we copied over from the wiki. Before we deploy Calinode, let's quickly cover what each service does. The Postgres is the database that stores the text and structured data. Valkey handles in-memory caching like RAM. Server is the backend and logic of Calinode. And web is the front end you'll access in your browser. Before deploying, let's update the paths to match your system. My Calinode lives on mount wall app data, not mount tank configs. So let's update that. On the server service, you'll also see storage file directory and the related volume mount. This controls where non-text files are stored. You can point this to a different pool if your pool you installed Calinode on doesn't have enough space. Now let's click deploy. I forgot to mention on the previous section, on the server service itself, you're going to need to adjust the server core's origin to your server's actual address. I'm going to go ahead and just use my local address for mine. Once you have corrected the address, go ahead and redeploy. Once your containers have redeployed, we're going to go ahead and click on the 3000 port for server. This is going to open up a Calinode local page. This is expected. Next, we're going to go to the Calinode website. This website will be linked in the video description below. Then we're going to go to Downloads at the top left. Next, you're going to choose whichever installation method you use. In this case, I use Windows, so I'm going to install Windows and I'll be right back. Once you have successfully installed Calinode, we're going to go back to that Calinode page. Then we're going to copy the address that it gives us. Then we're going to open the Calinode application. Once you brought the application back up, 
you're going to open up the server drop-down menu. You're going to click add new server, and then you're going to paste the address that that local page gave you, and then click create. Once you see that your server has been added successfully, you're going to open up the drop-down again. You're going to click Kalanode Local, and then you're going to click Register. You're going to register as if you are a new user. I have already created an account, so I'm going to go ahead and log into mine. You should land directly on the chat page. From here, let's go ahead and head over to our spaces. If you're familiar with Discord's layout at all, this will feel pretty familiar. Over on the right, you'll see I've already created a few spaces. For simplicity, I'm going to go ahead and just refer to these as categories and channels. A category is the top level container here that I have set as home. And inside, you can create different channel types. By default, you will start with the home category which includes a welcome page, a discuss and chat, and I've also customized the home category to show my profile picture. I've also added a database and a folder. You can add as many of these into each category. A page works well as a document for any sort of documentation that you have. A chat lets you discuss topics specific inside this category or whatever you really want it to. Databases are really great for prototyping and planning, especially when you're working collaboratively instead of individually. And the final channel type is folders, which gives you a place to upload and organize your files as a team inside that category. Going to the settings, if we click on the cogwheel at the bottom left, this brings us into the workspace settings. Under users, you can invite individuals into your workspace. Inside the storage tab, you can see how much space is currently being used overall and how much each individual user is consuming. And you can even set a per user storage limit of what they can actually upload and how much. You can also track user uploads and downloads directly from these pages. In my opinion, this is where Kalanode really starts to feel like a self-hosted alternative to existing applications that we already have and use. It builds on ideas that already exist and expands them into a single platform, which is exactly what it sets out to do. When you compare this to something like Obsidian, which is already a fan favorite application, Kalanode does more out of the box but with Obsidian's plugin ecosystem, you can get very close, if not exactly the same functionality, but that does usually take lots of time, setup, and familiarity with how Obsidian works. What I really like about Kalanode is that everything is already combined into one package, which makes it a lot easier to deploy, especially for users who aren't familiar with Obsidian or heavy customization. I also like that Kalanode offers a self-hosted cloud option, which is normally a controversial feature for open source applications, but for users who don't want to self-host, that adds confidence that the application will be maintained and continue to evolve. Overall, this is a solid application that brings together a lot of tools that are traditionally cloud only and gives you a local alternative. I would like to see more features over time. I'd also like to see the self-hosted installation process be a bit better. I had to heavily modify the provided Docker Compose and finding the original Compose in the first place did take some digging on my part more than it probably should have. Feature-wise, I'd love to see inspiration taken from Discord, especially around rules and permissions. That kind of granularity could add a lot of flexibility to a workspace. What do you think about Kalanode? Is there something you already use at work or personally that does one or all these tasks? And could you see it replacing any of those tools you're currently using today? Let me know in the comments below. Also, since I'm still a newer host, feel free to leave a comment letting me know what you think of my hosting style. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and consider subscribing if you've been coming back regularly. This is our last video of 2025. We sincerely want to say thank you all for an incredible year. We genuinely couldn't do this without each and every one of you guys' support and encouragement. Happy New Year everyone, and as always, stay curious.